Star Wars Summon by Summit episode 2683. It's a Spinner Sunday and we're continuing our look at the short stories in Rise of the Empire, which is the bind up of Tarkin and a New Dawn. This one is a story by New Dawn author John Jackson Miller called Bottleneck and let's just dig into it. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So, Bottleneck by John Jackson Miller. We're going to do this in a similar fashion to how we've done other episodes with five top takeaways from this particular story. We'll start by placing Bottleneck within the canon timeline. It turns out that Bottleneck is essentially a prologue to the novel A New Dawn. And I suppose before we go any further, I should say this is a full spoiler episode for this particular story in that the story came out six years ago and we still haven't talked about it. So yeah, I think we are beyond worrying about spoilers. But there's your warning in case you haven't read it and you hear this podcast and you're like, oh, maybe I should check this out. So I'll just jump right in <laughs> into the spoiler and say that even though she doesn't make much of an appearance in this story overall, Ray Sloan is featured in this story in a couple of scenes and Ray Sloan eventually becomes the Admiral of the Imperial Navy in the Aftermath novels but here she is just an executive officer on Tarkin's ship, the Executrix, and she is promoted to captain in the course of this, and you find out how it is that she ends up working with Count Vidian in A New Dawn. Come to think of it, the whole story basically sets up the reasoning behind how Count Vidian comes to Gorse in A New Dawn and what he's doing there, like just the overarching strategy of what he's going to be tasked with in the Empire. Yeah, that is all set forth in the story. Which leads me to my second top takeaway, and I guess this technically spoils A New Dawn as well, but Count Vidian was a great villain, and I say was because he died at the end of A New Dawn. And so, you know, reading this story is like, you know, maybe if I had read it a few years ago, I would have been, you know, more excited about it in that sense because I would have been like, oh, it tells me more of Count Vidian's story. And so, you know, that could have been compelling in terms of setting up conflict. Instead, I'm reading it six years later and I'm like, they killed this guy in A New Dawn and he was actually a compelling villain and a worthy adversary for anybody trying to rebel against him. And so knowing that you know, they introduced this guy in the very first novel of the rebooted canon and killed him off in the same novel, on the one hand, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, that's daring and certainly shows that the new storytelling situation is going to be unexpected and not going to necessarily try to milk some characters. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, ah, oh, they introduced a brand new guy who could have been somebody who invigorated some of the storytelling and they took him out right away. Then I'd sort of gone back and forth with that in my feelings over the years and so this just kind of brought it to the surface. I do think Vidian is a very compelling villain. Yeah, I just, he's kind of gone too soon. Now, for a third takeaway, one of the dynamics in this story, you know, is a little bit similar, I guess, in a way to the dynamic in the Tarkin novel by James Luceno. And so it makes perfect sense that Tarkin is a part of this story and that it fits in where it does. With that Tarkin novel, Tarkin and Vader were not necessarily well acquainted with each other and their working styles and so forth and so they kind of had to get to know each other and understand each other's strengths and how they could best serve the Empire together. In a similar fashion, that's how Count Vidian and Tarkin are put together and the Emperor, because he is always... <laughs> He's rather dastardly, decides like, oh yeah, Vidian is all about corporate management and Tarkin is all about military management, so let me put the two of you together on this particular problem we're having and see who wins out. And his whole thing is like, yeah, let's, uh, let's see who can get better because the price of failure is going to be even worse. He is definitely more of the <laughs> Jabba the Hutt commanding with fear instead of ruling with respect, right? Yeah, that's the whole bag for the Emperor. And so the story itself kind of rotates around the conflict of whether corporate management 
can drive better production for stormtrooper armor, which is what the whole story is about, at least at the beginning, or whether military management is better. And by military management, it's not just you know, putting an army in place, it's also by just enforcing kind of an autocratic slavery kind of situation where you meet the production quotas or you die. And where it lands for the purposes of the Empire is pretty much right in the middle. And that's where Tarkin develops a grudging respect for Count Vidian because Vidian is not only looking at the corporate side of things, but when they break up a rebellious cell of workers, Vidian actually snaps the neck of an Athorian leader of this thing. And so it's brutal efficiency and brutality of enforcement that combines to make the Empire that really unique, horrible thing that it was. Which basically sort of informs my fourth top takeaway, which is it's really odd reading stories like this. I mean, the Empire are supposed to be the villains in the Star Wars galaxy, and yet when you read a story that's written from the perspective of Tarkin, and it is really through Tarkin's eyes, Count Vidian is there, but Tarkin is the sort of you know omniscient third person protagonist of this story. I mean, you understand that the Empire has to win from time to time and has to be depicted as evil and crushing so that way you are more emotionally invested in the rebellion against it and wanting to see them succeed. But, you know, to have whole stories that are dedicated to the Empire and making the Empire seem like the heroes in this scenario, like, it is really weird to read. But it's pitched as a detective story, basically, where Stormtrooper armor production is not meeting what the Stormtrooper needs are in the Outer Rim. And so these Inner Rim companies that are producing the armor, like, yeah, they're up 50% in their production, but it's still not enough. And that just makes everybody in the Empire mad. And so that's why Tarkin and Vidian have to go and investigate. You know, don't build another factory, just run this one into the ground, I guess, as a solution in this case. But there is rebellion in this story, and as a fifth takeaway, I gotta say, John Jackson Miller came up with an idea that could have really been blown up into a whole novel. I think it would have been fascinating to do. The idea that he comes up with is that there's a little bitty part that gets manufactured into Stormtrooper armor that could bypass all the regular filtration systems and not necessarily kill Stormtroopers, but debilitate them to the degree that it would hamper recruiting, and it's just, it's it's a unique way of looking at rebelling against the Empire, and it's not a kill them all and you ground them down into the ground. It's you know definitely much more of a subtle idea to pursue, and I thought it was really fantastic and inventive. It would have been amazing to see it actually pulled off though, you know, as opposed to it being a detective story of, oh, we encountered this thing that they were trying to do. If it had been, oh, something is happening and we have to investigate what the problem is and they come to find out that it's this one tiny little thing, like it's a brilliant idea and there could have been so much more with it too. Um, you know, I'm not mad about the fact that it was used for the story. I just think like, oh, it could have been a lot more too and I would have been very excited to read it. And so that's what I've got for you about Bottleneck, the story by John Jackson Miller. It's a good story, well told, but it's also a story that just it comes with baggage for me because Count Vidian has been you know, lost to us as an effective villain and because the story idea was bigger than the canvas within which it was painted, as it were, and because you know it's odd to see the villains as the heroes in the story, but you know, there you go. That's what I got for you today, and that's gonna do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.